Jennifer Makombe, and I am a writer. I, my first novel, um, Chintu, won the Manuscript Prize in 2013. I have completed my second novel, which is called um, The First Woman Was a Fish, and it's a feminist novel, which looks at women who repress women and men who try to emancipate women. You know, there's a gap there that hasn't been dealt with uh, within the feminist movement that I want to plug. Uh, I was part of two panels. I had a book chart, and that the book chart was about my first novel, Chintu. And basically, they were asking me um, a few questions around uh, um, how I wrote the book, about the history of the book the historicity within the book, uh, how long it took me uh, to write the book. They were also asking a question why the book is so popular in Africa, but it hasn't taken on in the West. And of course, that's because I was focused on the African reader, because there's a, a, a suspicion among African readers that African writers write for the West and that we are ignoring them. So my book was actually focused on the, um, the African reader. And when you write for the African reader, it's specifically, you write in a particular way, and the themes are in a particular way. So I cut out colonization, even though it's a story that starts in the 1700s and aimed in 2004. So they were interested in those questions. How can African literature start to look b beyond colonization because um, co m most of African literature starts with colonization. So you would like to know what can we do uh, to, for African literature to look before colonization? Well, um, you have to understand that this started because the early writers were activists. So people like Achebe, people like Nguji, mm, um, Mungo, Betty, they were right, they grew up in colonization and they were writing to the colonizers and saying, look, what you're doing is not right. But unfortunately, if and after we finished, uh, uh, colonization ended, because the publishing world was in the West, we tended to write to the West. But people like me are now saying, hang on a minute, where is our history? We're so uh, disenchanted with the colonial project that now you're beginning to see people looking back. So for me, I went as far as the 1700s. But when I came to the um, beginning of the 20th century when Uganda was colonized, I cut that out. Because when you write colonization, uh, Western readers focus on that. They fail to focus on who we were before or who we are, yeah? And when I was discussing it, I talked about how Things Fall Apart is a book about a conquest. This man was absolutely frightened. And his fear raised him to the top of the world, but it also brought him down and destroyed him. And when you look at Things Fall Apart, that is l left out. It's just, oh my God, look what we did. We went and overran this fantastic, wonderful world. Achebe didn't write a fantastic world. He wrote a world that was both beautiful and ugly. And he wanted people to see that. But no, 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 all that was peripherized. And we focused on colonization. So because I've done a PhD in these things, I was like, it's not happening in my novel. So I cut out all the colonial element. I looked at what we were before colonization, and I looked at how what we are after colonization. Now, you see, with um, festivals like this, I've been to African ones and I've been to European ones. But there was a spirit here that was ridiculously good. And the army of young men and women who were just, just, just doing the work around, you know, showing you where to go, helping you with your luggage, telling you this, telling you that it was fantastic. It could, you could not believe this was done just by Africans without help because we always put ourselves down oh we never get anything right we never do but this was fantastic i can't say that enough and i don't think nigerians realize and i don't know whether they appreciate but you've got a beautiful thing going on there 
So what did I get out of that? Because it was that fantastic. The networking was wonderful. So I met people here who have come from Britain, but we don't see each other. And I find them here. And you network. Okay, give me your email. Do this for me. I'll do that for you. I'll find you an agent. I'll, I'll, I'll invite you for this uh, festival. That is one of the things I got out. And of course, there were the panels with some that discussed being in exile and writing back because that's what I am. And, uh, you know, uh, that was fantastic. Others dealt with how do you write sex in a book. And my book has sex, and I wanted to do to see what other people, how they do they do it. Because you won't believe it, but that's the hardest piece of writing, you know. And um, um, there was, of course, other people talking about history in, 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 in novels, okay, what you've just asked. And I learned from other people who've been doing the same. We also had a tiny, intimate, women-only session, yeah. Um, we went and sat on a carpet with our shoes. We started whispering the way African women do. You know, this man, you know. And it was really, really fantastic. And actually what we discussed were things like, now what do we do with women who are anti-feminism? Because we know what to do with men. But we don't know what to do with women who just hate feminism. And we were discussing where we've gone wrong, what we should be doing, you know. Um, I, I felt that that was fantastic, but we were also proud that Lola Shanaeen is running this show, and yeah, it's women out there. Um, the food, I've eaten. I was on a diet. <laughs> that just went through the window. I've just been eating since I arrived. Of course, I wanted to try palm wine, you know. I, of course, I've read about it. Um, and I don't drink. I don't drink at all. I can't deal with intoxication. If I drink a very strong coffee, I go high, just on a coffee. So I told people who were sitting next to me that, you know, I'm going to try it, but I'm not going to drink it. So you'll have mine. So they brought it, and I tried it. And I said, like, hang on a minute. You know, get to your own. I'm drinking this. You know, it was that good. And perhaps one other thing that I liked is the way we ended the whole Ake festival. I am one of those people who are into oral traditions, you know, our African traditions. It was wonderful to see this professor who told an oral story and the audience was involved, you know, because with writing, the audience just reads. But with African oral traditions, you, you sometimes join into the story, you sing the song. So he was doing it. And, and the funny thing, it was, who wrote Macbeth? I mean, how crazy is that? Because old Macbeth is not part of our, our tradition, but we've taken Western literature and incorporated it into our oral tradition. And it was fantastic. And afterwards, there was that uh, sort of libation with uh, Laura and I thought, yes, this is what an African festival should look like. You have the Western element and you have the African element. Mm -hmm.